Professor uh, Okada is the, uh, now the uh, president of the Japanese Association, Japan Association for Medical Informatics. She has been the leader of the uh, Japanese uh, community of the medical information uh, informatics, and uh, today's title is Medical and Health Informatics for Quality Care, Roles and Actions of the Japanese Japan Association for Medical Informatics. Yeah, yeah. so Dr. Uh, uh, Okada, yeah. please. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Tanaka, for your kind introduction. Uh, my name is Miyoko Okada, and the, uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, ex express my gratitude to the organizers of this conference to provide me with this uh, you know, very precious occasion to give my talk to you. I'm so honored to feel, yeah. Thank you. And yeah, as uh, Professor Tanaka uh, introduced me, I'm the current president of the Japan Association for Medical Informatics. I'll call it JAMI for short. And Professor Tanaka, uh, Professor Michio Kimura, who, present, who made the presentation yesterday, was the, is the former president of JAMI. And uh, Dr. Tanaka is the uh, former, 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 <laughs> former <laughs> president of three times former. We are more than 10 years ago, we are so, yeah, great, yeah. Well, this is my agenda, and uh, well, I have a lot of slides, maybe too many slides, so I'll skip this. And uh, well, first, firstly, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, uh, healthcare delivery system in Japan. Uh, we have universal insurance, that means all the citizens are covered by health insurance. And we have two types of health insurance, national health insurance and employee health insurance. And we have free access system that is a patient can visit any hospitals or clinics wherever he or she like. And we have about 805,000 hospitals and we have about 90,000 clinics. And uh, well, this is uh, taken from the uh, survey by the government, Ministry of Health and Welfare. And uh, this is the distribution of the number of hospitals. This is a total. And um, we have, we have uh, the, these are the major uh, providers category, like national, uh, local government, and this is social insurance associations. And we have medical foundations and uh, yeah, private uh, foundations and so on. And we have very little number of uh, national hospitals. We have more medical foundations and, well, I should have, I probably should divide it this into two categories. These are not, uh, these have include uh, different type of uh, providers, not single, but um, just an idea. And this uh, is also taken from the survey uh, by the ministry. And uh, I'd like, just like to show, uh, this is uh, distribution of hospitals by the number of uh, beds and also by the providers. And as you can see, the large hospitals are mostly you know, national. And we have more and more small hospitals by, run by uh, medical foundations or private foundations. Uh, just an idea, okay. And uh, we, uh, as our association, is currently uh, running a survey. Uh, we are just in the middle and we have not collected all yet. But I'd like to show you uh, the uh, interim report. Uh, and um, well, this is a, a distribution of the hospitals, just uh, classified by the number of hospitals. And this is the, uh, well, so far we have only this uh, 566. Uh, so, uh, and uh, as you can see, we have less, what should I say? less respondents in this category. And we have more, more respondents uh, in this middle class or you know, large scale hospitals. Uh, this is a survey for uh, uh, you know, about hospital information systems and uh, uh, human resources for hospital information systems so that, uh, well, a little bit of you know, uh, responder bias, I think, <laughs> here. But uh, well, never mind, I, I mean, <laughs> You mind, but uh, anyway, we will uh, provide you a report after we collected all the responses on our website, uh, on a uh, JAMI site. So this is just in turn. Uh, this is the uh, entire, you know, kind of 
uh, current state uh, of all, uh, how, you know, how, how many, you know, hospitals introduced hospital information system so far. For the account, accounting or administrative systems, most of the hospitals, like 95%, have introduced already. For PACS, picture archiving and communication system, about 72 or 3. And for, this is, I mean, uh, physician's order entry, about 62 or 3%. And for EMR, electronic medical record system, about 53%. Um, this is uh, by uh, the, the number of uh, beds. And uh, for implementation of order entry system, uh, more hospitals uh, introduced uh, the system uh, in a large scale or middle scale uh, hospitals, or as you can imagine. And for EMR systems, uh, yeah, similarly, we have uh, more hospitals introduced already uh, the EMRs, but for the small size, small scale hospital, only currently about 40% have introduced. Well, I'd like to, well, I wanted to just show you how we are now. And then um, I'll talk about uh, what we mean by health informatics and health information technology. Well, this may not be a generally consensus view. Uh, my, my view, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, well, this is probably general understanding. Informatics is a science about data. And it, it deals with uh, representation, collection, classification, or accumulation, retrieval, and so on. Application, everything. And informatics in medicine or healthcare or health is uh, we deal much about semantics and the context in medicine and healthcare. So that this includes healthcare delivery system itself or healthcare system and patient choice or patient physician interaction or you know uh, this features so to say socio technological aspects I think and uh, uh, we should have a clear goal and long term visions and uh, we have to produce improvement at any given time but it may be step by step evolvement that over the layers of improvement this is important I think. And uh, well, medical informatics or health informatics. Well, people often use these terms just interchangeably. We have academic research domain and the practical implementation. But uh, one feature of health informatics says uh, these two are not separate at all. These overlap significantly. We often do not have to separate these idea of research or implementation. And um, currently, oh, you have already heard much about EHR uh, during this conference. And uh, current, uh, recent understanding of EHR is not just, not just you know, providing direct, uh, supporting direct care, but it also support uh, like uh, quality measures or public health or population health or research and so on. And so that EHR is currently uh, understood in our society. This is the infrastructure for healthcare. So uh, then our, well, P Professor Tanaka also provided a view on the current state of our uh, conventional uh, view of the accumulated information. Well, uh, this is one of the major, yeah, topics uh, discussed in health informatics. Uh, how we can use accumulated clinical information for clinical research or epidemiological research. The goals are simple, for quality of care, and for population health, definitely, yes. And underneath these goals, we have accumulated clinical information as a basis. And uh, I tell you, there is such an enthusiastic uh, desire, requirements, and needs to make use of accumulated clinical information to us, I mean, to our society. And so that we, we are working hard how to, you know, develop, how to make a quality uh, clinical information database. Yeah, it's a very important, I think. And as Professor Tanako, Professor Kimura talked about, we have many initiatives, not initiatives, I mean, this already currently exists, we have many uh, repositories or registries or clinical databases in Japan. Well, I, I skipped this slide because it is described already. 
And still, well, last year, this year, we, we are also developing more and more registries or databases for clinical study. And the, uh, well, I don't have to maybe show this, but the expectation is, uh, in the past, we said we have to do uh, what, RCT or you know, cohort study, but uh, well, not exactly the same, but we might do something you know, close to cohort study using this accumulated uh, database. Uh, well, no. This is a kind of expectation, or oh, this is kind of epidemiological study design, but uh, this may be you know, more exploratory, what makes this difference, like using text mining or data mining or machine learning and so on. And then here comes uh, health informatics standards. By the way, I forgot to tell at, at the beginning that I'm a member of the ISO TC215 W1, and uh, so I'm with HF7, and also I'm, I'm with um, ICH, which is our internet, uh, for three regions, uh, regulatory for harmonization for new drug applications, and uh, well, I work for uh, standards for regulatory information as well. And uh, standard of course, should be practical. practical. Uh, if it's just an idea, it doesn't make sense or make use at all. But uh, standards nowadays, what we are talking about is, should be practical, but at the same time, it should be, uh, you know, there are so much, so many scientific activities with long-term future vision. And the activities go in parallel with academic research, such as clinical information modeling. This is tough work. Uh, not, uh, we have long, long, we should have long vision. And uh, as uh, Dr. Kush already uh, discovered about it, there are ongoing international collaborative activities uh, such as clinical information modeling or EHR for clinical research uh, like ISO TC15 or ISO 7 CEN or CDISC, they're working on this collaboratively, yes. And domestically in Japan, we work together with uh, industry associations or ministries, and uh, we have uh, you know, SSMIX or standard terminology. We have uh, delivered to the US society, as Dr. Kimura presented to you. And uh, well, this is uh, slightly different from the uh, standard or you know, transmission or exchanging. Uh, we have uh, developed standardized data item sets for self-management of chronic disease. Well, this is related to the Professor Tanaka's talk just previously gave. Uh, this is a minimum data uh, set for self-management of uh, chronic disease, like diabetes or you know, hypertension and uh, dyslipidemia and CKD and so on. And this is to ensure data inter interoperability, uh, you know, and uh, we define like data type or data item names or uh, what uh, granularity or unit and so on. This is important because uh, we have more and more uh, databases for clinical applications or clinical studies, and we expect they would like to you know combine or merge or you know put together. And in that case, data interoperability is a must. Without data interoperability, we cannot do it. So. Um, this is uh, one, just one example. There are more and more, more initiatives. And this is developed by like uh, Japan Diabetic Society or Japan Society of Hypertension and Japan uh, After Sclerosis Society. Uh, I mean, we, JAMI, work together with these clinical uh, medical associations very closely to, to support the standardization activities. Well, this is, we cannot do by ourselves. And uh, well, this is a kind of overview. We have already now have many clinical databases or registries and more and more are coming. And uh, this is a vision that we have or the government have. Well, in the end, uh, people, the researchers ha have some uh, you know, study objective and then there are many data sources and then they can choose depending on the purpose or information required from among these existing databases. Um, to support this, we have EHR infrastructure. But to accomplish this, this is ideal. We haven't, I don't think we haven't accomplished this yet. I mean, well, to do this, as Dr. Kush repeated and, and stressed, and also Professor Kimura 
talked, standards is a must, must definitely. And uh, we, for, for at this stage, we, we need standards of various layers, like with, with clinical domain experts, for example, clinical information models, or enable unique uh, interpretation, or IT enable specification we need. Uh, for quality data management, this, uh, I think, we haven't uh, put our, you know, effort, not so much so far, but we have to do work on this area. For quality data management system, we need human resources and the process and the system itself. And by system, I mean not only computer system, but the organizational system, human, you know, structure as well. And uh, like standard to support this flow, uh, and also like CD score, SSMix, and uh, also we need some research that connects EHR and the clinical studies. There are not many research activities yet, as far as I I saw on the you know, from the papers uh, available. And we are thinking of uh, next generation EHR system. Just at the beginning. And health informatics and health information technologies. I'd like to talk about our human resources. Uh, we, as JAMI, as I said, we have academic research and practical implementation both. And we also have this area of education and certification. We stress, uh, we put place emphasis on this activity too. And uh, we have health information technologies certification program by JAMI. Um, the reason is, uh, in the past, well, currently too, uh, there was heavy drug in both information systems and the healthcare settings. And to promote health informatics uh, requires uh, require health healthcare information technologies in both healthcare sectors and industry. Both. This is a must too. Uh, who understand the nature of health healthcare and who share sense of responsibility to help to help get in the society. Uh, and for future system, uh, I said uh, next generation of EHR, uh, we need people from both industry, I mean vendors, and from hospitals uh, who share sensible responsibility to work together to develop an you know, ideal next generation EHR. That's what we are thinking. And, uh, we have currently two uh, levels of uh, technologies. One is health, healthcare information technologies, and the other is senior healthcare information technologists. Well, the description is there, but you can imagine what they do. And, uh, well, this is a skill or a knowledge set for uh, required for healthcare information technologies. We have health. They, we require health information systems, um, information technology, and also the knowledge of healthcare. And we also require three Cs, we call three Cs for healthcare information technologies. This is communication, collaboration, and coordination. This is a skill required for healthcare information technologies. And uh, this is a trend in the past. We started this uh, certification program in 2003. And this is a uh, uh, number of examinees. Uh, it's, uh, from this point, it's uh, increasing. And this is a number of passers who passed the exam, who are certified. And currently, uh, at the end of, by the end of last year, we have 15,600 healthcare information technologies. Certified. Well, this is just, uh, well, may not be important, but uh, this is the year uh, distribution of the age of the examinees. Uh, in 2003, the first year, there are more people uh, in their like 30s, 40s, and like, and this is a current uh, examinees distribution of age. There are more younger people uh, who take this exam. So there are many students now. Well, this is a background of the uh, passers, not the examiners, but the passers. Well, this is a current. And this, uh, what's this, red or pink or orange area are 
kind of healthcare related divisions or place of work of employment. And this is uh, work of employment and uh, vendors or industry. And these are the others. And uh, there are only a small number of students, it looks like here, but uh, I think there are more students who just didn't say, I'm a student. So it, it is categorized under others, but there are more students here, I think. And uh, so this looks like there are more uh, pastors with hospitals rather than with industry, but uh, it's a bit misleading because in, in Japan, um, there are often uh, people from industry, uh, vendors, to work within a hospital to support the hospital information systems. So, uh, and uh, the, uh, as I said, we are running a, a survey to the hospitals in Japan. We did a similar survey in 2002, uh, just before we inaugurated the Health in healthcare information technologist certification program. We wanted to know how the state works and how people are doing, or what kind of people are you know, running the hospital information system and so on. And I made a comparison of the two year, two decades. Well, this is a 2002 and this is 2015. Uh, this is implementation of order entry system. In 2002, uh, this percentage of hospitals introduced order entry system. This is the current state, just about. And for EMO, this is more drama drastic. I mean, in 2002, uh, we have only very little hospitals uh, with EMOs, but currently we have this uh, percentage of hospitals, hospitals who introduced EMOs. But in other way around, seeing other way around, uh, we have this percentage of hospitals who have not introduced EMRs yet. This is the current state. And sorry, uh, this is our, we wanted to ask this question, do you have whether a dedicated division to run the hospital information system? This is the answer in 2002 and this is 2015. Of course, there are more hospitals which have dedicated division or department to run the hospital information systems. I think the, yeah, it's changing, it's changing. Um, this is, we did, not, we did not have this question in 2002. Uh, this is, do you have healthcare information technologists in your hospital? Well, in 2002, we did not have this yet, so. Well, for health information technologists, this is the percentage of yes. I mean, hospitals who have healthcare. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. For larger scale hospitals, there are healthcare information technologists, but uh, still not. You know, maybe not uh, sufficient yet. And for senior healthcare information technologists, well, there are only about two hundred. 82 people certified for senior. This is a, a bit tough examination, so that uh, only a few, there are a few hospitals with senior healthcare information technologists. Uh, well, this is uh, just uh, an idea. Who, who are in charge of running your hospital information system? Um, so many you know, types of people are engaged in running. Um, here we have healthcare information technologists, and here senior healthcare information technologists. And what well, Japan Association for Medical Informatics Action Plan, I'd like to talk a bit briefly about this. And uh, there exists a broad range of research themes and issues to be solved in health informatics. But among them, we picked up the topics that should be addressed from the viewpoint of societal infrastructure of healthcare uh, and of the association of the medical informatics. And, uh, Sorry, this is too small, but we have these categories of uh, action plan. One is scope of medical informatics and, uh, and, uh, and the medical information professionals. And number two and number two, uh, one and two overlap. One is uh, medical informatics with a view to uh, biomedical informatics. 
And the number two is certification of medical informatics uh, researchers and professionals. Uh, as uh, Professor Nakaya talked uh, about during his presentation, uh, we collaborate with uh, Dr. Nakaya's uh, institute, and also uh, Dr. Nakaya is one of our active member, actually. <laughs> And uh, well, like for example, when I'm uh, with uh, TC215 discussion, I'm with WG1, which is, talks about architecture of, of information. Uh, sometimes we, these days, have a discussion on bio, what should I say, uh, genomic information and so on. Then I call him, just come and you know, help us. And, <laughs> yeah, well, sorry. and then we have clinical database. Uh, registries and uh, you know we have well this is uh, so many activities now going on but I probably don't have time enough time and also we are tackling the legal and social issues in health informatics infrastructure uh, maybe oh, one is uh, evidential well this is a bit difficult tough one electronic health record how we can support EHR uh, as a, an evidence for uh, you know for uh, yeah, legal for legal issues. Yes, this is tough. And also, we are working for a sustainability of social security. And, uh, we also, well, I wanted to talk about this personal health record. This is a big issue, but I sorry didn't have time, do not have this time. But as Professor Tanaka uh, described, PHR uh, is probably a big a big target for now. On. And we. Have we like to develop uh, ethics for health informatics as JAMI? We have international code of ethics for health informatics associations, but now we would like to develop uh, ethics uh, code of ethics, uh, including genome information, and which is practical as well. And I'd like to ask Dr. Nakaya to help yeah, in this domain too. Ah, two minutes or three minutes. So, well, uh, and I'd like to, well, we are not as an academic uh, association, but uh, as a research group, uh, we are doing some uh, activities for, uh, for measuring, what should I say, cost effectiveness of uh, regional information systems or information systems that share patient information. As Dr. Tanaka said, we have more and more regional health information systems currently. And uh, in healthcare, it has long been said, well, we have to you know, measure or you know, analyze whether healthcare delivery is working well, the uh, performance of healthcare. And uh, similarly, we have to measure how well the performance is of health informatics. This is our theme. Of our research. And for uh, delivery of healthcare, there are you know, performance measure measurements or performance indicators, uh, internationally agreed measures, as well as domestic measures, and so on. I and mean, maybe most of the countries have these measures. But uh, we feel mm -hmm. that we have to measure for this new idea. I mean, healthcare delivery with this health informatics. And this, uh, this is, uh, this is draw as a kind of one of derivable from our uh, study. And uh, we, have health, we have to have quality health care, regardless of we have uh, health informatics or not, computer or not at all. This is just from the beginning. We need quality health care. And then we have EHR now. Um, this is not just a computer system. No, this is a part of healthcare delivery system, I think. And uh, this actually, uh, it's my feeling, changes, changed some part of healthcare delivery, like patient-physician interaction. I myself, it, it has changed, I think, due to the EHR, I think. And so we, well, I have, so, so sorry, too many components, but uh, well, to measure the quality, uh, care with health informatics, we developed this, and uh, these are uh, components. And 
pink orange area are healthcare, pure healthcare area. And this blue area are health for health informatics. These two uh, do overlap now. We shouldn't talk about computer system and healthcare separately. Always have to work on this together. Um, uh, most uh, to, we, we need to have uh, quality measures we have for healthcare or me medical area, but not for, I think, uh, health informatics yet. Well, we are gradually just developing, and we need to uh, very specific definition or specification for measures, and which can be uh, computed by system, computerized, computer enabled. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I finish. I finish. And well, during this uh, conference, I learned much about uh, uh, learning health system. Uh, I do I like to express my thanks to you, the leading people. And uh, here and there, I think we uh, we need, and we are uh, we do have in some part the learning health system. For example, uh, computed measures are now provided to physicians. In some area, not all, but in some area, yes. And this is um, didn't exist in the past, and it changes the way of you know providing healthcare, and uh, the result of analysis is directly fed back to healthcare, and uh, data interoperability will support continuity of care or collaborative care, I think, and uh, data interoperability. This will also support patient participation, and uh, this. <laughs> This might be wrong, I'm not sure, but uh, I feel this entirety should be a learning health system. That's what I learned during this conference. And, well, thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for a fascinating talk. Um, this session is open for the discussion. So is there any comment? Uh, Payment for health. Does the government change the payment for health care depending on certain quality metrics or reports? So far, uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet, okay. but we expect, yeah. They have some uh, payment scheme for, uh, for health care IT, but it's uh, very limited. And I think it's uh, one way that we should look for. I, I think that in the US, we, do you have meaningful I'm sorry, in the U.S. Um, but yes, I don't it, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm personally not sure uh -huh. that what we measure from our EHRs as quality uh -huh. really reflects much quality. Uh -huh. uh, it's very difficult, in my view, to do that well. Sure, sure. It's a real our research work. Uh, yes. Currently, yes. We'd Thank like you. to yeah, make a report on that. Thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. Are there any comment uh, questions? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Fashion talk. Yeah. Okay.